Good morning everyone. So today I am going to present introduction to RabbitMQ stack internal for system design. Welcome aspiring system architect and engineers. As you journey deeper into the realm of system design interview, it is essential to dive into a specific technologies that play a pivotal role in a modern distributed system. And one such technology is RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is renowned message broker system is at the heart of countless architecture ensuring a smooth communication between microservices acting as a buffer of system tasks and providing robustness against service failures. Understanding the internal of RabbitMQ is not just about knowing how to use it, but more importantly, understanding its fundamental design principles, architecture, and the intricacies that make it as a reliable choice for message queuing. In today's deep dive, we will unveil, unravel the RabbitMQ stack, discussing its core component exploring its underlying mechanism and confronting the challenging scenario you might encounter in the real world implementation. Whether you are aiming to impress your interviewer in system design interview, I hope this video is very, very useful. And I would say that one place to learn everything which is fundamentally required by any interviewee in system design interview as far as concerned with the rabbit and Q understanding. So I hope you will join this class to learn every beat and pieces in all respected you know, at any level of interview and i hope you will get true insight about the rabbit mq of course today we will not discuss about the hands-on things later we will try to build some video where i can explain you how to use or if you are a developer pure developer then how you can use rabbit mq in your coding day-to-day -day coding or in your project development project but today my focus majorly on how you handle system design interview question asked by your inter okay gentlemen welcome back so uh, let's start the question first question is how would you ensure that messages are not lost in a rabbit mq even if the broker crashes or restart explain the concept of durable exchanges durable queues and persistent messages so ensuring that messages are not lost in rabbit mq especially in the event of broker crashes or restarts require careful configuration and a thorough understanding of the platform's features. Let's delve into the key concept here. So you heard about durable exchanges, right? <clears throat> so in RabbitMQ, an exchange is a routing mechanism that directs messages to one or more queues based on message attributes. When an exchange is declared as durable, it means that the exchange will survive a broker restart. Its uses like when declaring an exchange set the durable property to true, this ensure that the exchange remain intact even after a broker reestimates, right? So next topic, which uh, I have to explain you, the durable queues. And the first thing, how to define it. So a queue is a buffer that stores messages by declaring a queue as a durable. You are ensuring that the queue itself, meaning its metadata and configuration, will survive a broker restart. However, this does not necessarily guarantee the part now. Okay, so durable queue you discussed, right? Now, next thing is persistent messages. So message persistence refers to the property of a message that ensures it's stored on disk and not just in memory. Even if a queue is durable, messages can be lost upon a break, broker restart if they are not marked as persistent. Okay. So usage is like how to use. So when publishing a message to an exchange, set the delivery mode property of the message to two, which stands for persistent. This action ensure the message is saved to disk. However, be aware that there is a slight performance cost since writing to a disk is slower than writing to memory, right? Let's start. Uh, so apart from earlier discussed three topics, let's discuss another additional consideration. Even with the above configuration, there is a brief window of time between the moment the message is received by RabbitMQ and when it's written to a disk to safeguard against the message because during this time may be lost. So message loss in this interval, it is essential to use publisher confirms, publisher confirms ensures that a message is not considered sent until it has been confirmed by the broker, right? So regularly backing up RabbitMQ data using tools like RabbitMQ backup can provide an additional safety net in your case. So using mirror queue is another strategy to increase message reliability. Mirrored queue replicate messages across multiple nodes in a RabbitMQ cluster. Ensure that if one node fails, the message is still available on another node. So uh, please note that, please note that uh, 
always always mark publish and confirm ensure that the message is not considered sent until it has been confirmed by the broker so this line has to be highlighted please note this line that publisher confirms ensure that a message is not considered sent until it has been confirmed by the broker that yes it is sent okay so by that safety net like this and mirror mirror using mirror queues and um, regularly backing up rabbit and queue data you ensure that there is no fail case will occur here in this case right that is what this section is discussed is so uh, let's just start again to understand how it works when a message is dead letter it is published to the dlx the dlx is just like any other exchange and will route the message to queues bound to its based on routing keys and binding rules so dead letter queue that is bound to a dead letter exchange it is intended to store messages that could not be processed so these dlx and dlq is in sync always right that is the most important point to understand and explain now let's try to understand how dlq is working so once a message is sent to the dlx it gets routed to the appropriate dlq administrators or developers can then inspect these messages determine why they are not they were not processed and decide whether to retry processing or archiving or discarding them is required let's try to understand at the developer point how to set up these things so create a dlx just like any other exchange create a dlq and bind it to the dlx for the primary queue for which the message might get dead letter set the x dead letter exchange argument to name of the dlx optionally it is not compulsory but optional here is you can also set the x dead letter routing key argument if you want to specify a particular letter exchange or dead letter queue work in rabbit and queue so in rabbit and queue there are cases where messages messages might not be processed successfully this could be due to a variety of reasons such as a failure in the consumer processing logic a rejection of the message by the consumer or even because the message expired in such scenario it is crucial to have a mechanism to deal with these unprocessed messages so they don't get lost to or cause indefinite blocking this is where dead letter exchange dlx in short form and dead letter q dlq comes into play now let's explain first the dead letter exchange what is dlx so in simple simple term i will define a dead letter exchange is a type of exchange in rabbit and queue that is used to receive messages from queue that could not be processed messages can be dead lettered for reason like message rejection by the consumer time to live expiration and queue length limit so these three factors is very important let me repeat again the message rejection by the consumer ttl time to live expiration time and queue length limit okay. so let's try to create a summary until now so as a summary we can say that dead letter exchange and dead letter queue in rabbit and queue provide a robust mechanism to ensure that messages that could not be processed initially are safely stored for further inspection and potential reprocessing this ensure data integrity and helps in debugging and rectifying issues in the message processing pipeline that's why it is very important please note this thing okay and you should always discuss these things with your interviewer while explaining this because these are giving i mean these will give the interviewer intuition that you aware of the nitty gritty inside stack of rabbit and queue right so that's the important point too and always always put your interviewer know these things i mean clearly like whatever you are communicating you always communicate with clear words get the response of your interviewer does he or she is able to catch whatever you are trying to say if they not please hold on stop at there and just go back and explain again let's communicate and get the feedback from your interviewer please note that getting feedback of your interviewer is very important you cannot skip it otherwise um, probably uh, your interviewer will detach with you and then whatever you are explaining even though it is right maybe your interviewer will not get that intuition or sense that you are aware of these technologies so welcome back uh, let's try to learn the additional points here so let's let's try to understand what is message metadata when a message is dead lettered rabbit mq will add some headers to it like x death to provide details about why it was dead letter this is useful for debugging purpose of especially for developer and architect who or anybody who is doing rca right so beware of loops here ensure that dlq is not set up in such a way that it routes messages back to queue that might reject them again and causing an infinite loop so very careful i mean as a developer you should be very careful and as an architect or reviewer you should always care about these factors then message inspection is regular inspect the dlq as it can give valuable insight into issues in the system or your application logic so that's why it's a very important then manual intervention depending on the nature of the failure 
manual intervention may be needed to resolve the issue before retrying mess all right so here we will try to understand difference between clustering and sorting on the basis of some points like first point is purpose so clustering primarily for high availability and low distribution but sorting uh, for horizontal scaling i mean scale by partitioning a large queue into a smaller queue is spread across nodes or clusters another point is implementation the first was purpose then implementation so how come clustering is implemented nodes are interconnected and they share the same schema how sorting has done how sorting sorting has implemented so a logical queue is split into multiple smaller queue sorts this can be across nodes or even clusters the third important point here is data distribution so how cluster in case of clustering data is distributed so messages in a mirror queue mirrored queue are replicated across nodes and how sorting is making here so messages are distributed among sorts with each sort potentially residing on a different nodes let's discuss the fourth point which is failover how clustering managing the failover and how sorting so clustering in the event of a node failure in case of clustering another node with a replicated queue can take over so and the same thing for inside the sorting approach is if a node with a sort with a sort fail only that sort messages are affected other sorts continue to operate normally okay is uh, let's try to understand now the load distribution the load can be distributed across nodes right consumers and publisher can connect to different nodes distributing the connection loads right uh, important points here which is queue mirroring and network partition partitioning let's try to understand queue mirroring what it exactly it means and what how it is helping the in clustering so in a cluster queues are still owned by a single node even if they are visible from all nodes to ensure high availability of messages you can mirror queues across multiple nodes this ensure that even if one node fails the queue messages are still available on another node okay so the simple logic like it's a replication kind of things okay but the terminology is used here is definitely a mirroring queue but the concept is same another point to understand here is network partition and this network partition is very important in distributed system please note this cluster are sensitive to network issues because any net i mean anywhere this network partition happened it will break the complete communication chain right so please note that every network partition have their own ability to sustain the network faults that is then only your distributed system is really meaningful and sustainable to failure scenarios that's why this point is very important especially on senior developer and architect who is designing the complete system right so breaks then now some part may have diff updated data some part have stale data so now data inconsistent ha inconsistency happen and in that ca case you eventually uh, achieve the consistency by by concept called eventual consistency technology right so by eventual consistency you can get the data consistent and uh, this is the reason i mean i believe that i have not discussed cap theorem yet so that's why i am not going in detail but when i discuss the cap theorem you exactly know what does it mean why i am saying that out of c a and p we can only achieve two and that is either c and p consistency and uh, network partition or availability and network partition not all three together can be possible so that is we'll discuss in the cap theorem not now so please avoid that part right now okay